All right, so the level two strategy got us long right here in the mini Russell. So I turn this one on at 755. Here's our reaction to the 730 news event. So we get a quick pop right there, massive volume. You know, obviously you're going to have big slippage on any entries right here. We pull back down. We took out this recent structure support right there at the 96s. And then stopped on a dime with the cluster buy signal right here. And now we're off to slightly higher highs. Again, not significant follow through after taking out this new high. So with the strategy getting us long right here, the strat says if these criteria are met, then buy next bar market. So obviously, these criteria have been met. So scalping contract targets attained with the momentum follow through. And now I have two ways that I can manage the position. A, I can come over here and manage it using my base dynamic structure trading, which would be looking at our DSR levels, RSI's overbought, oversold, and so on. Or B, I can simply allow the strategy to trail the stop. So I've got the trail stop set to the 1618 fib dots minus 5 ticks. So the fib dots are always going to take a look at the value, or I'm sorry, minus 1 tick of the fib dots on this chart. All right, now, obviously, if I wanted to look left, I could look at relevant market structure. We had no significant gap. I've got... 600 tick uh, uh, or 932 tick DSR levels coming in against these highs and I could exit based on that. So primarily Mark what we're looking for is we're looking for position management using the DST as well as the size of the uh, average profit. So let's take a look at an example of that. What I'll do is I'll turn off the chart trader real quickly So one of the things I talked with one of my clients about early this morning is we want to take a look at performance in a multi-contract strategy. I want to say C1, contract one, which we typically call the scalper. Okay, I want to look at profit and loss on that particular contract. Now, obviously, typically we just say, okay, what's the net? And then the other thing we typically look at, obviously, is winning percentage. What's very common in our models, especially on the momentum models, is we want to arrive at a high win ratio, 65% to 80% when the markets are performing. Okay, It'll be lower when we have very few or very little follow through, very little directional movement. And then obviously when conditions are favorable, we go to 80, 85% on our contract one profit target. Then on contract two, very, very common, is for our win ratio to decline. So our winning percentage drops, but the size of our average win goes up. It increases in size. So if we look at the overall net, then we still look at maybe a 1.5 to 1 risk-reward ratio. So current example we might take a look and say, okay, right here, my RSI is overbought. I'm at previous structure resistance right here. So based on that, I'm going to exit this market at market. All right, so we come in and again, gang, employ everything. Go back to everything using that if-then thought process. So all I've done is I've introduced a conditional statement. If Kerpos current position is long and RSIOB at DSR level and a key price point, then what do I do? What action do I take? A, one, I can exit a market. And again, I want you to consider, this is imperative that you say, okay, psychologically, what impact does that have? Well, it's going to be dependent upon what the market does next. If I exited right here, and then the market comes all the way back down here, well, clearly, I did the right thing for that one particular event. And thus, it's highly likely that I'm going to reward myself. boy, Well done, buddy. And my mind holds that information. 
I'm reminded about what happened the last time I took that action. And we have very short-term memories, especially as day traders. So when I take a look at that, then I want to be considerate of that condition. The other thing that happens if I decide to exit at market, I don't have a position any longer. So I have no position for a potential new structure high here. So if this market goes 487.50 higher and the strategy using the trail stop produces another $275 in profits, I have missed out on all of that. So in the level two aspect, it's designed to automate the entry, the initial stop loss, profit targets. Most of my clients struggle with, is this really a signal? Or trading multiple markets. And again, you have gotta constantly be engaged with, understand the importance of the psychology. So if I'm trying to trade multiple markets and I'm having challenges with um, basically managing all the information here, okay, then what winds up happening is at the end of the session, let's say, for example, I trade the mini Russell. The mini Russell does nothing for the day. And then at the uh, end of my day trading session at, let's say, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I left click, I go look at the NASDAQ, I go look at gold, and I find out had I just traded one of those other two markets, I would have made 2,957.50. But I was over here trading the mini Russell, and the mini Russell was choppy today for whatever reason, on and on. Well, clearly, at the open, I had no idea what markets were going to move that day. Okay, we can get some inside bar setups, maybe an NR4, NR7 the day before. We can look at ADX, DM positive versus negative, those types of things to try to predict that with a higher degree of accuracy. But we still don't know. And then, of course, what we do is we beat ourselves up. Oh, well done. Way to go. You know, you should have just stayed long that trade or today you should have just traded gold. Again, it's such a worthless, useless waste of your mental time to do that because there's just no way of knowing. Well, one of the things that this allows us to do is overcome that because now it allows me to know, A, every time we get our conditions met, I'm putting a trade, period. I don't have to worry about it immediately because the strategy places the, uh, the stop, and that stop typically is a catastrophic type of stop. We just want to say, put something in in case something goes wrong. So for example, I had a signal this morning prior to the news event, right at it. It generated the buy signal, took the trade, massive slippage on the entry because of the news event, and I wound up getting stopped out. So the signal should have been turned off prior to news. It's Thursday, it's a Friday news report, one day early because of July 4th, okay? So very, very simple. But here, I can trade multiple markets knowing that if I'm away from the desk, getting a glass of water, whatever I might be doing, as long as I'm in the vicinity, I will hear the audible tone, I will see that I'm in a position, and then I can easily come over to the chart and I can start to manage the trade, okay? So if I exit the market right here, now I'm looking at it, and we're, let's go ahead and we'll turn this back on, and we'll take a look at, okay, now where's the trail stop? So we are currently up $260 in open position profit. This represents 250 240 Obviously, this is dynamic. If I exited right here, then I probably netted around 220 Now, the protective stop you can see is that 1220. So from our entry at 9950 to 1220, we're locked into $70. So some of us are quick with math, even if you aren't, it's not difficult to say, well let me see, I'm up 300 right now, and yet if I get stopped out, I only make 70. Well, for everybody, that $300 is better than 70. Okay? So if I make a decision based purely on how I feel, a, I fear this $400 winner turning into only a $110 winner. So I exit right here, and I feel justified in that decision because I've talked myself into it. Well, clearly $400 is a lot better than $110. Well, yeah, but if this market now, based on this news event, continues to run, and this particular signal winds up making $1,100, 
then $1,100 is significantly more than the 350 that we could have just made. And at this time right now, none of us know. None of us know what's going to happen next. So the challenge is always between the discretionary trade and the purely systematic trade is we will find ways where we could have outperformed the strategy on one, on two, on three, maybe four or five trades. The strategy over a period of time is designed to A, remove the fear, remove the pain, put us in the positions, place the stops. B, get us to that first target and then C, trail the stops and allow us to manage the second half. And so again, if I'm out here willy-nilly with pure discretion, then I'm highly likely going to fail as a trader. If we add rules base to that, which I call level one, then level one says, okay, the stop is trailing behind this yellow dot. We take the value of the yellow dot, which is right over here, and we put it right there. We put it five ticks below or whatever. And again, as I always say, 100 out of 100 dentists agree. So everybody can do that. Then it's just a question of did the trader follow that, yes or no. And then again, purely objective at the level three would be the strategy does everything. Literally, you just turn it on, sit here and watch it, make sure that everything's going well. Those are the most difficult because they do everything. And obviously, the strategy, it's more difficult for them to account for volatility range contraction versus expansion and so on. Okay, so at this point right here, you see there have been three times where we've peaked, pulled back, peaked, pulled back. And again, gang, it is a, um, a completely illogical thing to do to sit here and now look at this as it starts to pull back against the position. And I see that what I could have had up here has faded and instead of 410, which was our maximum favorable excursion. Now we might only make 140. It's a useless practice to sit here and say, well, I should have taken it up here. Again, when the market was right there, you thought this thing was going straight back to the 1210 handle with no pullbacks. And now that it comes back down here, you're going, ah, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Again, any goofball can do that. It's just such an irrational thing to do. So don't invest any of your time. Now, you can say, okay, what was present here that gave me a clue to this potential retracement? And then you can start to look for tendencies. All right, so here's what we saw. We had an RSI that was overbought. We made a higher high in price, and we had a lower reading in relative strength. So the relative strength of the bull move is declining with each higher high that price makes. So that's a clue that we're losing the momentum behind this directional move. So based on that information, if I get a, and then we could look at a candlestick pattern, we could look at a close below a three period EMA. We could trail the stop to below the most recent swing low in price. There are any numbers, a number of things that we can do at that point. But again, it's got to be if-then thought process. It's got to be based on tendencies that we see, price action tendencies, indicator tendencies, whatever those might be. And then again, we have to quantify it. We can't just say, well, sometimes I'll do X, sometimes I'll do Y. We need to quantify it and be able to go back in then and test it. Now, how would that have performed historically? If every time I'm long and I'm trailing my stop and I see a doji followed by a bearish engulfing candle, I exit next bar market. Well, in this particular trade, that would have gotten me out of the position at approximately 12.02.70. So that would have made me another $200 on this one trade. Okay, now let's go take a look at that over a sequence of or a series of 30 events where those criteria were present. And maybe on 18 out of those 30, the market pulled back, stopped here, did not take out the trail stop, and then went five points higher. So exiting on that pattern with that lower close, bearish engulfing, exiting at the next barn market was the wrong thing to do on the majority of the 30 trades. Thus, this little exit strategy that performed best right here hurt the overall performance by taking away more profits in the bigger moves.
But again, in order to do that, it requires that we look at it, that we test it, that we invest that time. And the beautiful part is as we're doing that, we're also recognizing other tendencies in the market. Okay, so very, very critical. So if then thought process, number one. Number two, got to look at it over a series of events. Number three, I got to be able to quantify what it is. It can be pattern based. It can be structure based. It can be indicator based. But it's got to be something. And again, if those of you that have children um, or are around children, you got to say, if I can't teach this to a 10 year old or a, a newbie trader, regardless of their age, so, for example, if I set my sister down at a screen and I said, okay, if you see this guy here make a peak above that red line, and then you watch the market make a higher high with a lower reading here, I want you to just click this button, close, or click sell market. That's it. That's why I always do everything in that if-then thought process. If I can't do that, then I'm likely working with parameters that are difficult to identify, define, quantify, and thus it'll be almost impossible to put that into a rule space that you'll follow with consistency. You know, verbiage like, well, I really like to see the market going higher, or when the market's strong. Well, what does strong mean? What does strong look like? What indicators do you use to define strong? Do you do that all the time or just some of the time? Well, I like to look at multiple time frames, really. What time frames do you like to look at? Daily, weekly, four hour, two hour, one hour, 15, what? Okay, so what if the weekly's bullish, the daily's bullish, the 240's bullish, but then the hourly's bearish and the 15 minutes bearish, then what do you do? Well, it depends on how I feel, no, 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 no. You can't work off of feelings and all that stuff. Now, if you can say if the weekly close is greater than the 30 period SMA, the daily close is greater than the 30 period SMA, and the hourly is above the 200, and get quantifiable like that, and get specific, now you got something. Okay. So, for example, Mark sent me a fantastic email about a setup, very specific criteria. If this, then this. If this and this are present, then this. If this, this, and this happen, then I want to look over here, and if that's present, do this. And obviously, computers love that language. So writing a trading system, a trading strategy with that language, they love that. They literally just can't function if you say, well, sometimes do this and other times do that, or uh, stuff that they can't quantify or see. If the sky's blue today and there are no clouds, then do this. If I'm wearing a black shirt and in a great mood, then I'll do this. I'll increase position sizing if this. Okay? Yeah, so for example, right here, I come up with an idea or a thought process. I take a look at this and I start to recognize criteria, conditions. Traded this yesterday. So I've got a new momentum indicator right there and then a moving average of the momentum indicator. I identify bearish. I'm looking at a different way to use relative strength right here, plotting sell signals, the little red uh, triangles that you see above. Then right here was my buy signal this morning. So I take the buy signal, boom, slippage, and then get stopped out. And then, of course, come right back in. So here is the five minutes immediately after the news. And then right there is my buy. And we'd still be long. Okay. So it's that if-then thought process. All right. So let's pull this guy back down or pre-market. We did our higher time frame analysis. Uh, the NASDAQ, we talked about buying that 38.85 pullback right there. That did hit, so it hit in the morning at 10.30, and then it hit right here on the 1,000 tick. So again, this was a with trend trade right there. We rallied back into our DSR resistance at 38.94s. We sold them here yesterday morning, profited here. We sold them here. I'm sorry, here and here. So we had a DSR level here, five points. I sold them here, took six or seven. This was the buy with trend right here at our DSR support levels, retest, and now new structure highs. Okay, so NASDAQ trade, nice winners yesterday. Not much going on today. We will see if we get a pullback. So we've got our key price point set up right here. Our DSR level came in from the 4,000 tick chart, 38.95. 
Okay, now we've broken above, closed above. Anticipate the retracement. And again, high probability point of confluence. You'll note right here, we'll grab the ray. Left click here. Right there, we're going to have basically a low to low trend line extension meeting at or near that previous DSR resistance. And the classic, if structure resistance is broken, we make new structure highs then, previous resistance anticipated support. Now, 100% of this right here is based on that news event. Okay. All right, so there's the NASDAQ. Now let's go back in here, take a look at crude oil. Yesterday we did some projections. Just gorgeous trade. Had the qualified sell signal very early. We bought them here, 750 on the way up per contract. Again, most of you take plus 18, let the balance run. So right at 900 on the way up here. Qualified sell there right at the DSR resistance levels. We had the cluster three, RSI is overbought, actually a cluster two. There's the turning point, black tip, sell them, plus 18, balance off at the opposing DSR level. I bought them here in the uh, late morning, made a little bit of money, stopped on the balance, and then I sold them here. We did our analysis. We said, okay, if price breaks below the DSR levels, then where's this market headed? So I took the static swing I did my Fibonacci extension. We projected 104.32s. We projected 104 even handles as the low. We took a look at our ATR. We went right to the 127s here, stopped. Previous structure support, anticipated resistance. Sell it, sell it, continuation move. And we went right to the 104s right there. Now this was towards the close of the session and then late night. And then since that time, we've been in that continued bear pattern. The bear continuation, a series of lower low, lower high, new structure low, lower high, new structure low, lower high. So double bottoms right here produce a rally. Neither of these rallies has been sufficient to take out the prior swing. So the bear continuation pattern is still intact. The other thing right here, grab the vertical line Right here is where I had a shift in my momentum. And you can see right here, we broke below, closed below the DSR level, and then we had a nice continuation move. Okay, so crude oil attained both of those targets after a break below the DSR level. Once these levels give way, we trade below, close below, then we typically see continuation. And again, right there was our structure support so again, note, once broken here, the market rallies back and that support became resistance right there. And on our trading time frame, 150, 233 tick chart, we had a sell signal here. We had a sell signal here. Now that doesn't look like much, but from here down to here, 18 tick target easily attained for 180 and then let the balance run. All right, let's take a look here at uh, Dow Jones. Okay, Dow Jones, same trade that we saw. We missed our long entries right here with trend. Our DSR level right here, 530 this morning. Again, news event. We've broken above, closed above. So now we've got an area of interest back at 16,910 to 920. So basically any long entries at 16,900s. Not quite to Dow 17,000 on the futures contract. 16,975. Cash may have been there. Let's go take a look at uh, S&P. Horribly sideways choppy day yesterday. So again, right there, we talked about that sideways channel trade, just ugly sideways stuff. And then finally, break above, close above. Beautiful cluster buy right here, 737, seven minutes after our news event. So again, still aggressive. RSI oversold, SOS1. Turning point, SOS2. Black tip immediately on the next bar. So this is a cluster two, SOS3 buy. 1968, retest of the previous resistance for plus three. And then we would have been taken out on trails right over here.
Gold was a game of Pong for several sessions, moving sideways, and then we finally broke through. So again, take a look. Right here is gold. And again, gang, this is a nice $10 range, or basically $8. So we want to be buyers at the $24.25 here, and then we're sellers against $32. So again, note your big mo is bullish, white. So when I'm selling here, I'm covering here. And then when I buy here, I can add to my position size. That's right. So the long entry's right here. Scalpers at the midpoint, balance off here. And then finally right here, we took out support. So we go 5-0 and oh in the sideways trade. And then right here, there's a buy signal. We make new structure lows. We're stopped out. And now 5-1. and one. Okay, so now we rally back into this 1324. Qualified sell signals here probable. Volatility right here around the employment numbers this morning. And then we've popped back up. So right here, gang, let's watch 1324.25s. And remember, uh, you know, zero interest or very little interest in any overnight holds because of the extended weekend. Okay, so let's pull this guy back up. Remember, we were long right here. We got stopped out. Then we had a momentum sell right there, level two. Our target one attained right here. So from the 1,240 sell, 1,199.10, profit target one, plus 130. And now we see right here that our buy to cover is still up here. I turned off the trail stop to break even. So I make that decision on my own. Now let's take a look at where's price relative to. So we'll tar now chart down a little bit. Clearly, a reasonable expectation would be a move back into our current swing lows here, right around 11.95. Current trade, 99s. So if I get a reversal signal here, the strategy will automatically reverse the position. It'll take me from short one to long two. And based on the reversal strategy right there, that'd be about a 30-tick loss. I'm sorry, three-tick loss, $30. Okay, so I'm going to pull my stop down right here, knowing that I'll get a reversal. I want to give this some wiggle room, pop back up here possibly. Right now, from where we currently set, 99.60s down to projected targets, we've got $500 of opportunity. So DST owners, back into that question, if the market were to sell off and roll down here with a buried RSI, then I'd consider taking the balance off at this area. That would be a $500 winner. Our average winner on the second contract is less than $500. Yeah, and yesterday we looked at the same basic thought process. And by making that decision to cover, we actually outperformed. So again, the reason we did that, A, we were oversold. B, we're at a DSR level. C, we were at a key price point. So all of those things were part of our regular strategy.